The first one uh, is conducted by Jessica, Jessica Bidenfield, and it's gonna be B D eighty twenty human. So please, big applause for her. I knew it. I was eight years old when I saw my dream man. This skinny, this tall, with this much green spandex. And he was in Universal Studios, Florida. He was Senor Recycle. And he was inspiring kids to recycle. Making parents <gasps> open their eyes and making teenagers go, Ugh. And I thought to myself, one day, I'm going to become that funny guy. I'm still eight, now it's Christmas. Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum. And my grandma, Gertrude, who has never said an unkind thing to me in my entire life, turns to me in her sweet, adorable voice and says, wow, you really cannot sing. And that day, small town Canada lost a Britney Spears. <laughs> Do you remember the first time someone told you that you can't? The power of can't, you're not enough, uh-uh-uh, on the young mind. Years passed. I'm not eight anymore, but I am surrounded by eight-year-old Mohammeds. Mohammed A, do your homework. Mohammed B, stop talking. Mohammed C, stop throwing things at Mohammed A. I'm a 24-year-old teacher in Cairo. And the kids oh, still have nightmares. But there's this one boy, curly-haired, Teeth, perfectly imperfect for an eight-year-old, Mohammed. And every day he would run into my classroom. Miss Jessica, I love you. <laughs> Mohammed was the most enthusiastic child at the entire school. The problem was that Mohammed didn't know that he had a learning disability, a severe learning disability that didn't exist in Egypt. And one day he came up to me, report card day. Miss Jessica, am I getting smarter? What would you have said? Hmm. I took what Mohammed had said, and it stayed in my brain for a very, very long time, but I had left Egypt, and I went back to a life that wasn't quite happy. Things got sad very, very quickly. I went to the dark side, Canada. <laughs> it got worse. Sex, drugs, and insurance sales. <laughs> and I got to a point in my life when it was so dark, and I forgot who I wanted to become, what I was about, and what I dreamt of doing. And my life got darker and darker. <laughs> Do you remember a time in your life that you thought that money would bring you happiness? I took off. I went off and did a Eat, pray, eat. A lot of butter chicken. And I found myself, um... In India, I started studying what I loved, what lit my eyes up, and I realized, this is what I wanted to become, this is who I want to be. And after about ah, 32 million hours, I became the definition of success. That funny guy. I became every mother's worst nightmare. 
not a stripper, but a volunteer hospital clown. I'm sorry, Mom. And it lights my eyes up. The feeling of walking into a hospital room with those children that haven't smiled in a very long time. And I go, and I'm called Dr. Ballerina. <sighs> what about you? Do you remember what used to make your eyes light up, what you wanted to become when you were younger? Imagine if there was a world where you, I, and Mohammed would feel safe being ourselves with our goods and our bads and our uglies. Mohammed grabbed my hands, looking up at me. Miss Jessica, am I getting smarter? And I grabbed those little hands and looked at those big brown eyes and said, Mohammed, every day you're getting smarter. I knew it! And I knew it too. I knew that I had to create a place where people could be themselves. I don't know what healed me. I started doing a whole lot of therapy. And by the way, if you do enough therapy, you end up becoming a therapist. <laughs> Two in one. And I did a lot of improv. Noah's here from Barcelona Improv Group. And he was a big factor in helping me learn the yes end. And then I started clowning. How many people, by a show of honk, have ever done clowning? Uh, wow. The lab. The lab is a space that we all create when we do workshops. A space where facilitators create a safe environment. Paul Z. Jackson, the co-founder of the AIN, told us, accept and build when someone offers you an idea. The lab, listen, accept, and build. If you do not listen to what you, your partner, is saying, you cannot solve any kind of problem. Nothing has been solved from saying no, and you can also not solve a problem that you don't know exists. What's the first thing you have to say when you go to Alcoholics Anonymous? Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Jessica, and I'm a clown. <laughs> the shame. After you listen, you don't repress, you don't deny, you don't pretend you didn't see the problem. The problem exists. And then you have the second choice in the lab, to accept the reality of what is here. Huh? Might be crap, but that's what it is. And then you have a choice to make a positive, Decision or a negative decision? Your choice. And in the lab, this is the place where you experiment with your self-trust. And so we all co-create these together. You have your own labs with your own ideas with the things that you specialize in. And I wanted to really focus on the idea of accept. I propose that you, 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 and I are 80, 20 humans. 80% of the time, we are just so generous. We share our salad. Oh my gosh, we shared um, that lovely vegan meal this afternoon. <laughs> Cindy shared two desserts with me. Thank you. But then we have that 20% that we hide from everyone. <laughs> I wish Cindy would have given me the whole piece right? That side of you, that dark, selfish side that all humans have in the yin-yang of humanness. And once we accept that we have the dark, hide the last cookie from your boyfriend because you've had a bad day and pretend there are none in the house, am I alone in that? <laughs> Thank you, humans at the back. Only once you can accept that you have the dark, dirty, smelly side can you accept the bright side. 
And in the lab, this is possible. We create opportunities for people to walk into a safe environment, to listen, to accept what's offered, and to choose to build the yes and mindset. The power of the lab is transformative. As a therapist, I offer to you that possibly therapy and improv are very similar. Can I get a yes if improv and therapy are slightly similar? Yes. Okay, can I get a no if they are nothing similar? Ah, I could have not predicted that. There are about four basic emotions that every human, from the Philippines to cold Canada to beautiful Avila, have. What are the four primary emotions? I had surprise. Boop. Love. Oh, look at the hippie in the room. Yes. Da -da -da. He's got a beard. So let's call them happy, sad, scared, and angry. In your childhood, if you had a normal childhood, one of those four were not accepted. Think right now, if you showed one of these, probably not the happiness, fear, sadness, or anger, when you express this in your childhood, did somebody go, oh no, we don't do that in this household. That's too uncomfortable. I don't know how to deal with that. Think about it, you don't have to share it right now. I'm not on the clock. And now I want you to imagine, if you're not expressing one of those emotions because it's not safe for you to express it, you're about this tall, and you're feeling this, you're feeling the anger bubbling up inside of you, your cheeks are going mm, clenched, your fists are getting tighter, and you're not allowed to do it, what choices do you have? You run away from home. You have to decide to replace it with a different emotion. Because the feeling is not going to go away, it's just going to transform into something different. So most people are going to feel an emotion, say, that's dangerous, and change it to something else. Imagine you're walking down a dark, you can close your eyes, oh, 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 a little bit of music, it's a dark alley, that was the wrong music. You're walking down, it's 12 o'clock, it's in the scariest city in the world, small town Canada, lots of people in track pants, yeah? And someone comes up to you. You're with your two best friends, there's three of you, and they hold out a gun. We don't have guns in Canada. They hold out one of those bows and arrows that those sheriffs have. And <gasps> your friends don't make it. What is the first emotion that you feel inside of you? Shout it out. Fear, fear sad. Fear? And what would be your first reaction? Fear, anger, sadness. Sadness. Yeah? How quickly does that emotion translate into something else? Quite quickly, because our society tells us that some of these emotions aren't appropriate. And so we, create these labs for people to come and deal with the emotions that they haven't worked on in their entire lives, the emotions that are stopping them from having filling intimate relationships with people. It's very important that we put them into situations, just like in Gestalt therapy, which I've studied, just like in improv, just like, you are put into situations where you